Okay, so you've done some research and figured out that the person you're with most likely has borderline personality disorder. But maybe you're also starting to wonder if her condition might be even worse than you originally thought. Do you get the sense that she really has no ethics, morals, or empathy, even though she can talk a good talk? Does she almost always seem to get off on hurting you or hurting other people? Do you feel like you're constantly being manipulated, deceived, exploited, dominated, or downright bullied? If so, you may be dealing with someone who has borderline personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder, which is an incredibly toxic combo. If you try to love someone who has both of these diagnoses, you will suffer major psychological damage. She will leave a massive hole in your heart, leave you with so much confusion that is so deep, your head will be spinning for months, years, maybe even for the rest of your life. I'm Lise LeBlanc. Today I'm talking about 10 signs that your partner might have both borderline and antisocial personality disorder concurrently, which I will refer to as a malignant borderline for the purposes of this video. And if this is your situation, please make sure to heed my advice at the very end of this video. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Let me first say that most individuals with borderline personality disorder are not antisocial and vice versa, but a wide body of research demonstrates that it is possible to simultaneously qualify for both of these personality disorders. If you watch Yellowstone, Beth would be a good example of a malignant borderline. However, because it's TV, there are some fundamental errors which I will highlight throughout this video. Okay, so number one, the malignant borderline will seem to have a split personality. She has normal and often above average reasoning and communication skills and way above average street smarts and survival skills, providing her with an outward mask of near normalcy, near sanity, and it allows her to temporarily hide her severe interpersonal deficits and emotional disability. So it comes across as two distinct sides. On the one side, she is charming, sweeter than anyone has ever been to you. She needs you. You're her hero. Um, then she suddenly switches and slams you with a level of nastiness you've never encountered before. Number two, the malignant borderline will tell you deep private things and act like she is being emotionally vulnerable. Her stories of maltreatment may be true, but she is sharing them with you as a ploy to get you to trust her, to feel sorry for her, and to create a sense of responsibility and loyalty to her. She also wants you to reciprocate by sharing your secrets that she will later use to intentionally manipulate your emotions, coerce you, and con you into giving her whatever it is she wants. She will act flattering and supportive, mirror you, and make you feel amazing, get you high on her. Then she will control you using the information you provided to trigger your guilt your fears, your insecurities, to make you feel horrible about not being able to meet her needs, protect her, and be the hero that you promised to be. Number three, if your partner is a malignant borderline, it is highly likely that there will be some interpersonal violence. And I'm not just talking about her words, I'm talking about hitting, kicking, slapping, throwing things. Their romantic relationships and sometimes other relationships, depending on the severity, often include calling the police, restraining orders, dramatic stalking scenarios, and so on. Number four, in addition to interpersonal violence, the malignant borderline is prone to lying, cheating, stealing, conning, and committing nonviolent crimes such as fraud. They are not concerned with the rights of others, although their behavior may not always be criminal, it does consist of a pattern of callous, remorseless, malicious behavior. As long as they are gaining pleasure or profit, all is good in their world. Think of Beth, 
from Yellowstone who will do anything to protect the Dutton Ranch, no matter how criminal, no matter who gets hurt. Number five, they almost always have severe substance use problems as a way to pacify and subdue their shame and psychological distress. Again, think Beth Dutton. Individuals with borderline personality disorder, especially the impulsive type, can sometimes be confused with those with antisocial personality disorder because they can act out in hostile and harmful ways towards themselves and others out of desperation, recklessness, and impulsivity. The impulsive borderline may lie or manipulate to avoid abandonment and ease their emotional distress. And their personal histories are also often filled with chaos, troubled relationships, promiscuity, substance use, as well as legal problems. But the impulsive borderline is not motivated by profit or pleasure. She generally feels bad when she harms others, but when you add the antisocial personality um, for which the main criteria is a pervasive pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others, including lying, stealing, hurting, and mistreating others without any remorse, this is a recipe for disaster. Number five, you are completely trauma bonded. In the case of a malignant borderline, it is highly likely that every single person you know and trust is telling you to run. But no matter how much pain and suffering she is causing you, you just can't leave. You promise to protect her in ways that no one ever has. You feel completely responsible. You feel guilty, not only like a failure, but like you're committing some kind of act of treason. And every time you're apart from her, even though there's some relief to be away from her abuse, you also go into a complete state of distress and can barely function. With the malignant borderline, there is no doubt in your mind that she's bad for you, but your fierce loyalty to her has you making excuses, defending her and covering for her, and always going back no matter how violent, psychotic, or off the rails her behavior is. Number six, when she feels hurt by you, whether intentional or not, she will ruminate, rage, and plan her revenge to ensure that she inflicts maximum pain on you. When she perceives that you've betrayed her, she will classify you with all of the predators who used, abused, and disposed of her her entire life, and she will make you pay dearly. She will channel her boiling anger into premeditated, intentional acts to ruin you, and she will take great pleasure in watching you suffer. There is really no limit to what she is capable of. So, for example, if she got you involved in any kind of questionable activities, watch out because she will take you down. She will expose you to your friends, your family, your boss, the police, lawyers, uh, social media, anyone who will listen. She's not concerned with her own self-image or how she's viewed by society. She will lose her cool in public. She will call you out. She will do anything in her power to ruin your reputation and she will not stop until you go down professionally personally legally she wants you to suffer number eight she does not own up to her behavior there's no accountability no apology the malignant borderline does not have any remorse someone who has borderline without the antisocial traits will often apologize profusely and you can tell it's genuine the borderline may not be able to control their behavior, but they do feel bad about it. That is not the case with the malignant borderline. The malignant borderline will justify their behavior even to themselves or they'll pretend it never happened. And on the very rare occasion that you do get an apology, it's either fake or it's a brief break in the fabric of their delusional survival shield. In this case, they will likely regress to a very young childlike state, give you an apology um, filled with tears and filled with pain. And then just as quickly, their shield goes back up thicker and stronger than it even was before. Number nine, in the 
rare event that the malignant borderline actually gets attached to someone, things will get very messy very quickly. The malignant borderline typically has a disorganized attachment style and as soon as it is activated, it causes them major emotional distress and you will be held responsible for stabilizing her intense emotions. You will experience extreme fits of jealousy. You will feel her rage and self-loathing and when you fail to make her feel better, she will cut off her attachment to you. If she keeps you around, it is only for the resources she can extract from you. No matter what you do, what you give her, it will not be enough because her underdeveloped emotional system and attachment system make it impossible for her to trust and bond with another human being, no matter how much of a knight in shining armor you are. Going back to Beth Dutton, her strong bond to Rip is one of the romanticized factors that simply is not based in reality. The truth is someone with borderline and antisocial personality disorder is not capable of stable attachments. And the more attached they get, the more nasty they get. Eventually, you are going to simply be in her life because you are useful to her survival. The fact is, attachment to her equals pain, danger, fear, rejection, and abandonment. Number 10, despite all of the abuse you're enduring from her, you still feel sorry for her. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel sorry for her because malignant borderlines have often suffered unimaginable traumas, horrifying conditions that most cannot even imagine. Now, I am not defending the malignant borderline's behavior, nor suggesting that you should tolerate it. Quite the opposite. In fact, I would suggest you drop everything and run. Get professional help. This will not get better over time. It will only get worse. You cannot save her and she will ruin you if she hasn't already. For her, it is a matter of survival. survival. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and to learn more about the Impulsive Borderline, please click on the link above.